drugs will not help you th- to deal with depression, sadness. Drugs will not help you deal with depression. I don't know who told you that. I don't know why people think that. I don't know, you know, where they get this theory from that if you go take this drug, this drug will, will help you deal with what you're going through. That's a lie. That drug is not going to help you deal with what you're going through. It's just not. Sorry to be the party pooper, bust your bubble and stuff, but I'm just saying, just keeping it 100 with you. Um, And I want people to get out that mindset of thinking that a drug is going to help them. You know, because I used to think that. I used to think that a drug was going to help me um, be able to live a more happier life. Let's put it like that. A more happier life. A more life of of fulfillment. But I knew in my heart that when I came to my senses and, you know, woke up like, Boy, these drugs is not helping you. These drugs ain't doing nothing for you. And in reality, drugs make it worse. Drugs make it worse. So I'm just going to get my little two cents in this uh, to to the people who think that drugs are is going to help them cope with depression or being alone. Or being lonely. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Spiritual J, coming back at you again with another video. I pray everybody's doing well. Y'all staying safe out here. We praising and worshiping the Most High um, for waking us up to see a whole nother blessed day. So let's go uh, jump right into this. So you got um, you got people out here who who thinks that um, drugs will help them, will help them cope with being alone, being lonely and stuff you know because we're never alone let's let's get that straight first we're never alone god is always here with us we're never alone you know no matter what you're doing in your life you're never alone everything we do in this life we're gonna have to like you know it, everything bad good we're gonna have to answer for it um on judgment day but that's why we're never alone but we do get lonely though People do get lonely. I say that. People do tend to get lonely. That's a that's something that happens with, you know, majority of everybody in this world felt like even even the ones who are married right now, at some point in their lives, they felt so lonely. At some point in their life. They did. There's people who have killed themselves, committed suicide because they felt like they was alone. That nobody was here for them. Nobody was here to, you know, talk to them, provide, I mean, you know, just to be a friend to them. So they committed suicide. So many people, millions of people are in the grave, are gone because of suicide, because of Satan tricking their mind. Into thinking that they are alone when they're not alone. But that's what Satan wants you to think. He wants you to think that you're alone. He wants you to think that it ain't no hope for you. You just gonna die, uh, you know, you just go go on ahead and commit suicide. This is what Satan wants you to do. This is exactly what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to think that, you know, the most high ain't real. He wants you to think that. That you know that you that you actually got a relationship with God, you know. But if you got if you really have a, a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit will fight off all this stuff for you. But we got to do our part also, and to not inviting the demons in. But at some point, we all you know still do it, did it, uh, do it on you know. Don't be doing it willfully, you know. Slip up sometime because that's what you're going to do. You're going to slip up sometime. I ain't, don't don't be like them two religious people and be like once you come into Christ you shouldn't sin at all sin shouldn't even be in your vocabulary you you shouldn't make no mistakes you shouldn't do any of that you shouldn't you know you should just be perfect and and they are a fool they are a liar 
Um, they don't know what they're talking about at all. Righteous man falls down seven times and gets back up. That's scripture. So where in the world is it in the Bible that you're not going to you're not going to slip at all, that you're not going to sin at all once you come into Christ, that you're not going to make any mistakes? That's a lie. That's a lie. But don't willfully sin, though. That's the difference. Don't willfully sin. A lot of us willfully sin. We just want to be honest. A lot of us willfully sin. And we know it. And we, and we continue to do it. See, when you... A lot of people feel like they are alone. Going through something right now. But you see, this, this only happens when... Something happens in your life. You know, when something happens, something tragic happens in your life and you need and something, you know, you need somebody to talk to. You know, you that's a time when you really need somebody to talk to and it's and you you feel like it's just nobody there. You know, you feel like you feel like it ain't it ain't. Ain't, ain't no way to get over that. You feel like, dang, I'm really going through this, this by myself. You know, this. See, a lot of people, a lot of us aren't, a lot of us aren't strong minded. A lot of us aren't strong minded, at all. A lot of us, something happened in our lives. We we ready to just give it all up. We ready to just commit suicide. We're ready to, to go in and take a Percocet. Smoke weed. Smoke cigarettes. We're ready to go do all that. Kill our system. Kill our mind. But we don't never call on the one who can really defeat these, these demons. For what you're really going through. You're really going through through some demons. And that's the Holy Spirit can uh can defeat that. You can't defeat no 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 spirit by committing suicide how how you gonna how you gonna feel better by committing suicide i don't know about that i'm pretty sure i i ain't never i'm not dead and, and gone into the afterlife but i'm pretty sure committing suicide ain't gonna do nothing ain't gonna help at all you feel what i'm saying you know committing suicide and taking these drugs y'all It's not, it's not going to help you. You invite demons in when you do that. Because when you give an invitation to the demons for one little thing, and guess what happens? They will come in like a flood. They come in like a flood, I'm telling you. They come in like a flood. A lot of, a lot of times I see people dealing with this, like I just said, when something happened in their life. But most of the time, it's, it seems like it's always a, a heartbreak. It's always like it's a heartbreak. You know, people actually be out here losing their mind over, over somebody. They be out here losing their mind. And they get on these drugs. Like, that's really going to do something. Satan wants you at your most vulnerable point. He wants you at your most at your most lowest point in your life. This is when Satan creeps in. He creeps in and he starts to put those tricks in your mind. Put those put those, you know, them things that put all these negative stuff in your in your mind. He tells you these things like, "Oh, you you ain't this." You ain't that. You gonna die. Go on, go ahead and commit suicide. This is what Satan is doing. See, we Ephesians 6 and 12, y'all, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But principalities, rulers of darkness, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness, y'all. Wickedness. You fighting, we fighting these battles that's unseen this is unseen stuff it's not seen 
and no, getting drunk out of your mind, going and getting so drunk to the point where you black out, and you wake up not knowing how the hell you you got you got to the um to the, the freaking freaking um Sahara Desert. No, I'm not. I'm I'm not talking about getting drunk like that. Because you definitely drawn in some uh, demons like that. You draw in demons doing this stuff. Drugs is not going to help you. Drugs is not going to help you. The Holy Spirit will help you once you turn from your wicked ways. See, a lot of these people put this stuff on their self. A lot of people put stuff on their self. And then they're fighting with their own self. A lot of us, we are our own worst enemy. And this is this is the problem. When you when you try to help somebody in this life, when you're trying to help somebody and showing them what they're doing is wrong, what the problem is, they don't want to hear it because it's it don't feel good to their emotions. Because they, their ego is so high that they don't want to accept the fact that or that their pride and stuff is just so high that they don't want to accept the fact that there is their fault. They're the reason why. They're feeling like that. I was talking to this one girl uh, this one time. I'm not going to say no names. I ain't even about to go into full detail about it. But long story short, just playing it simple for you. She was with this dude. Who this dude, he... I believe he liked her. I believe he he um enjoyed being around her. Or it, like enjoyed what she could do for him. But... He didn't love her. He wasn't in love with her. Um, you know, this dude, he was cheating on her, doing all this stuff. He was, you know, he bought her a, a um um disease from going to cheating, messing with these other females and stuff. She was with him for three years. She was with him for three years. Stayed with him that long. And in the midst of those three years, he kept being on and off with her. He kept breaking up with her and leaving her and coming back to her. And guess what she do? Have have open arms and bring him right back in. And she's sitting there and she accepting the fact that this man is cheating on her. She should have drew the line the first time. See, me... I guess I'm just different because to me, cheating is not a mistake. I don't care who disagree. This is what I believe. I believe cheating is not a mistake. It's not a mistake. How is it a um, mistake when you know what you have at home, but you still choose with your free will. You still go and sleep with that, that other person. But you know what you got, though. And a lot of people be like, it was a mistake. I was drunk. That's not a mistake. Who the hell told you to get drunk? It's not a mistake to get drunk. You know, you sitting there at that bar, okay? And the and a lot of people, I'm I'm just make this make a point, a prime example. A lot of people, I hear a lot of people say this, especially when a holiday coming up or New Year's. Uh oh. They say, I'm about to go, go bar hopping. I'm about to go get drunk. We about to go turn up. We about to go get drunk. So you know, if you sitting there drinking that much, and you taking too much in, come on now, what you think going to happen? You going to get drunk. Most, and probably pissy drunk to the point where you can't drive. But, oh, hey, so many people have drove, and now now look where they at. In a grave. Gone. Soul, soul, soul in the afterlife. In, in the um, um, afterlife. Flesh in the grave. Buried. Gone. And we think that it's not a hell. We think that hell... Not we. Let me not say we. A lot of people think that hell isn't real. They think that the afterlife, the most high, angels, demons, they think that none of this stuff is real. You you out of your mother effing mind. 
<laughs> you out of your mother effing mind if you think that all that all that stuff is fake. Satan really playing with your mind and if you think that the afterlife is fake. He really got you wrapped around his finger. You gotta change that. You gotta you gotta change that that mindset. But see, you know, I'm not trying to bash nobody because I be going through the same thing sometimes. I'm not trying to because I can talk about this because I be dealing with this sometimes. Satan, Satan be trying to uh, he he be messing with me all the time, of course, and he gonna do that, you know. But see, we got to use the, the spiritual weapons, y'all, to fight to fight off the fiery darts of. This this enemy that we have. But see, going back to this girl that I'm talking about. So, but she knew. She knew that that dude was cheating on her. But guess what? She stayed anyways. And she stayed and stayed and stayed. And anywhere that she went, she took him with her. She took him with her. This is the foolishness. And now, she stayed in that long, kept getting more in love, kept having sex, soul ties, uh-oh, drawing in demons with these soul ties, having unprotected sex, or just having sex, period, with somebody who's not your married partner. You having, she, she was having sex with, some, with a man who, who didn't love her at all. And now, she's stuck with these, these demons, getting drunk. And getting high. That and now every time uh every time that I see her, she always wanna get high. She always wanna get drunk. And that's not that's not good. Now now look at that. Now Satan got her wanting to take drugs now. Go on to take drugs. Take drugs. You'll feel better. That's a trick. That's a trick of Satan. It's a trick. Don't fall for the trick. You know? And and let me just tell you this. You know, he tells you to go and take that drug. He tells you to go take that drug to get you to feel better. So look at it. You go take that drug and to make you feel better. And then when you when you go back to your sober self, you feeling that pain again, and guess what's gonna happen? What's gonna be missing now? That drug to make you feel better. You need that drug. Your flesh is going is craving that drug now. Your flesh is gonna crave you to be. It's gonna crave for you to be feeling good. This is why so many people get hooked on weed. Because it makes you feel good. Not just weed. Herring, coke, crack, whatever the, the hell they, it is. Baking soda, oxy. What's the other one that, that I was just talking about last night? What well, this one girl said. I can't remember. I, I, I'll put it somewhere. Uh, this, this, is what this is why people get addicted to it. Because it feel good. And most of the time, the people who who have a bad addiction are the ones who be going through the most when they're sober. The ones who, who are broken. Those are the, the addicts. The ones who are really broken inside. And they feel like that drug is their savior. You putting a God before our God. Before the real, the only God. This other things out here, these are little G gods. There shall be no other gods before me. For I am a jealous God. That's a lot of people's gods. It's their drugs. That's a lot of people's uh, gods. It's their drugs. Just like another example. This ain't got nothing to do with drugs, but when somebody's in a marriage, okay? Somebody's in, in a marriage. 
you marry the wrong person. That's why it's important, y'all. Don't just jump into a marriage with somebody who you you say that you in love with, but you ain't do your whole research on this person. You ain't did your you ain't did your homework on them. That's why a lot of women, that's why a lot of women get with men. And when it comes time that the woman and, and the man part ways with each other, something happens. Now all, all of us, all of a sudden, just magically, this man's four kids come out of nowhere. This man's four baby mamas come out of nowhere. Think about that. You never knew that he had kids. And you, you never knew that he had other kids because you didn't do your homework on this man. You seen that he was attractive. You seen that he had money. You seen that he had that he had swag. He got the he got the materialistic stuff. He got the cars, the houses. He got he got good sex. Oh goodness. Hold on. I'm about to go do a backflip. He got good sex to you. So now you blinded by all that. You blinded by all of it. Now you in love. That man that that man got your heart now. You so in love. You about to go write write some poems. Now you go write you go while you while you writing a poem, while while Rebecca is writing the poems, she over there in love, over there thinking about all the things that that um think about her future with him. He's somewhere at Jasmine House, uh, making another baby. Uh now he about to have Jasmine writing poems, uh. Because you ain't did your homework on him. He talking a good game to you. He talking a real good game to you. And you believe in everything he's saying because you don't want to lose him. And now, something bad happened. You fall in love. He break your heart. Now your whole life done changed. You turn into a, especially somebody who never been in love before. And being young at that. Oh, shoot. Most of the time, it'd be a single mother. Most of the time, it'd be... It'd be child just don't, don't even have neither parents. Somebody end up dead. I see it. I seen it happen. Recently, I seen it happen before. I see it happen all the time, man. And now you turn to drugs because you, you're trying to cope with the pain. You're trying to deal with the pain. Now you think that a drug is going to help you with that pain. And it's not. It's not. If you put it on yourself, now you got to deal with it. Now you got to... I ain't going to say just deal with it. I'm a, I'm saying get closer to God. Get the Holy Spirit. But see, most of the time, what we don't realize is that the most high will stir up something to happen. He will stir up something to happen. He will stir up. He will create something for you to happen for you to get your heart broken. So that you can turn to him. And lean to him. And lean to the Holy Spirit. Because that's what he is. I ain't going to say him. Because God is, is, is spirit. God is the Holy Spirit. He, he He's man. He can, he can work through a man and a woman. Alright. So that's what I'm saying. We got to, y'all, you got to turn to God, for real, for real. God is the drug. Now, it should be a learning lesson for you. Drugs is not going to, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you with that. The most high will probably, he he could, he'll probably, he probably have you alone right now for you to work on yourself. For you to figure out who you are. Because if you cooped up with some fool, or you you cooped you cooped up with with a woman who want you and your who in your whole game, then you ain't gonna know who he is. Now it's that person that got your heart, and you don't even know who the Most High is. Think about it, y'all. So I ain't gonna make this video too much longer. Um, I feel like I said everything to get somebody attention. Uh. You know, because a drug is not going to help you. The Holy Spirit will help you. Put that drug down. 
don't go back to it. Or finish what you what you're doing. Finish what you're smoking. Finish what you what you you know, and don't go back to it. Repent. Don't go back to it. Be done with it. You know, be done with it. Change your life up. Do something different instead of taking that drug. You know. Find something else to do rather than you know to deal with your emotions because your emotions, you know, those are, those are just your emotions. That's basically all. All it is is just your emotions. You're you're just emotional. That's all it is, you know. You just just emotional. Depression, you know. Depression comes from. Most of the time, it comes from our choices. You know, so, uh, yeah, that's all I had to say, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. Peace.